to 2.4.2, which is our first higher order environment diagram. We're going to draw an environment diagram here. You can see it's higher order because we return a function from within another function. Okay. All right, so let's get started. We'll just go through it. First things first, create a global frame. Try and save myself some space here because it's a pretty big program. Okay, so we have n. Just reading from the top down, we have n is equal to 7. We're going to define a function f. So we want to define it over here. It's a function f takes as an argument x and has a parent that's global. We don't read the inside of this function again. So g, reading down, we have a function g, takes as an argument x, it's got a global parent, and we have a function f here. So now our function f is going to actually be, our f value is going to be reassigned from function f here with one argument to a new function f that has two arguments. So we're going to create this new function f. Function f takes as the argument f and x, and it's defined in the global frame. So notice now we have no more pointers to this function, so it no longer is accessible from our program. All right, and so now we have a new local variable called m, which is going to be the result of calling f on the arguments g and n. So let's do our normal thing when we call a function. We're going to evaluate our operator. Our operator is f. We have an f in our global frame. Points to the function f, which takes an argument f and x. We have an op operand g. g is right there. n, n is right there. So we can go ahead and create a new frame, f1 which is the function f okay and f has local variables f and x so f this local variable x is assigned to the value of g g is the function g right here so let's point to that we have a local variable x as well so let's say x and we passed in 7 there Okay, and so now in here we don't define any new functions, but we're going to call the function f on, uh, so first we need, so we have a, in our return value we're going to make a function call. Okay, so we need to look up the value of, so let's evaluate our operator first. Our operator is the function f um, called on the v arguments x plus n. So let's first look up what our operator is here. Our operator is f. We have it in our frame one. So we've got the parent here. And the parent one. F is in our f one. It's going to point to g. So this is, you can think about this as calling g on the arguments x plus n. X is seven. We don't have an n in our frame one. So we're going to call. We're going to look up to our parent. It's global. We have a seven right here. Okay. So now you can think about this sort of as calling our global g on 7 plus 7. Okay, so let's do that. We'll make a new frame. Frame of function g, which has a global parent, capital G, not to be confused with lowercase g. And now we can read, so let's define our, takes one local variable x, which is equal to 14 in this case. Now we can read the inside of this function. We define a new n, n is equal to 9. And now we're defining a new function, but the unique thing about this new function is that it's defined within our frame f2. So we have a function h, takes no arguments, and its parent now is f2. So parent is where it's going to look up its values, and we'll see that in a moment. Okay, now our return value is that function. And so now we can replace this with our function h that we've just defined in here. So now let's call our operator is h, and we're going to call it with no arguments. So we'll make a new frame f3. It's h. Its parent now is f2, right? 
Okay, so now we can read the body of H. H has no argument, so it's going to start with no argument variables. But it's going to return, it is going to return x plus 1, right? So we don't have an x in our frame 3, so we need to go to our parent. Our parent is f2. So we, have, we can replace x with 14. And now we return x plus 1 is 15. OK. And so now our, um, this is going to be, all this is going to be replaced with 15. So we finished our calling our function. Replace this with 15. f is going to return 15. And m is going to be assigned 15. OK, that was our first higher order function environment diagram. All right, let's go.